G'day and welcome back to my channel. Now, the St. Louis is really coming along. Look at those lovely wood decks. And I'll show you in this video how I put these tiny wood veneer planks on the plastic to get those nice wood decks. Stay watching to the end of the video. There's a special appearance by Bass the Cat. I know a lot of you ask, so yeah, hang in right to the end and you will get to see that uh, feline, that famous feline. All right, well, let's get on with this video. Roll the music. Now it's time to change that just painted deck into one of these lovely wood decks. I've already finished the main deck and the uh, quarter deck there. And as you can see, when they made it up with those, um, those bulkheads, it's all starting to look very nice. So let me just um, pop this piece out. So everything's just dry fitted here. And we're going to turn that into one of our wood decks. Now, the stuff I'm using is this Artworks sheet of very fine veneer planks. And they're all individual planks and they're just on the sheet in alternate you know, one, 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 which is not how you would normally plank. So actually using the sheet as is, is not really recommended. And it is with its problems, just trying to cut them out. So really you have to pull each plank out individually. And that's not really that hard. And that way you can get a more authentic plank look. Because what I've done here with these planks is I have applied the uh, the rule of making sure there's a space. There's at least, I'll just show a pick here, there's at least three planks between each sort of common join, right? So join, join, join. There's a break of three planks. So you don't have plank, join, plank, join, plank, join, which you don't normally do, especially not on a big deck of a ship like this. And these planks, uh, well, they're 650 mil, or sorry, 65 mil, goodness me, 65 mil here, which when you scale it up, it's about 10 meters. So they're about 30 foot planks, which is about right. Now to work out the size planking you're going to need, well, you can see it sometimes on the molding and the kit maker may have got it correct. So in this case, Airfix has scored the planks there. So you could just find the widest part of this and then count the number of planks and then measure that divide by the planks and see what number you come up with. But uh, I already had some of this deck planking and it was so close to Airfix um, size, it was only a fraction of a millimeter out, and it was going to take a week or two to order some more and I was too eager to, to get ahead, I've used it. And, and the planking size looks, looks fairly reasonable. So I've ended up using 1.8 millimeter planks, probably 1.6 would have been more accurate, but I don't really care. It, it looks fine for this particular model. So measuring this up against the actual planks on the sheet, I find I've got 29 planks evenly. And my grating here is nine planks. So I've got two measurements of odd numbers, which is good. So that will mean when I plank this, I will need to put a center plank and then go out from it. If I had even numbers, then I'd need to know the center line and I'd put a plank either side. The reason is I want to plank out and evenly end at least somewhere on a plank that's, you know, without having to chop it up. And especially here with the, um, the grating, well, you know, I don't want to end up with half a plank and half a plank and then have to cut in half a plank. It's easier if I can find a fixed measurement. So nine planks will fit my grating beautifully and then I can plank out from that. And there'll be 10 planks on either side. That'll come up to 29. So that works well. So I've measured all the pieces first just to get a lay of the land. Now also priming them, that Steiner Res Primer is on there, not for prettiness, it's on there because it does help these decks stick. And I also usually put a mixture of half white glue and water on for the big deck pieces. But that's mainly so you can slide them around and get them into position. What I found with these tiny little veneer planks, they're so small and you can pretty well get them in the position spot on the first time. So there was no real issue about needing the white wood glue to let them slip around. And in fact, you've got a little, because they're so tiny, there's a little bit of movement in them because it's not much sticky. They do set nice and hard after a while, but you do have about five, 10 minutes when you've got a bit of movement in them. So that is handy to know. Now, if you're trying to search for these blanks online, they are available at BNA in Melbourne, Australia, but they come under a funny name, Planking Spread Sticker Wood Sheet. Yeah, 
<laughs> Not what you think. I mean, I think I was looking, searching under planking when I was trying to find a solution for a, um, a better with plank for my Revel Batavia because the Batavia planks are scored so badly. They're overscale. They are garish. They're just ridiculous. And I came across these um, these sheets. And so I bought, I bought some for that. I bought some for my prints. And um, yeah, they are really good. I'm going to use these on every one of my plastic ships from now on. They are terrific. So let me show you how you put it together. Now some tools you're going to need to do this. You'll need a very sharp knife. Very sharp. It's got to be sharp enough that you can just kind of tap it on the planks and they'll cut. You can't really be dragging and scoring because you'll rip everything out of shape. So I've got a scalpel blade here. This was actually given to us by a doctor out of the model club. Yeah. So these are disposable scalpels. And um, I've got quite a few blades and they are sharp. You'll be careful. You'll need some tweezers for doing things, for lifting and pulling. I'll need a paintbrush. One for putting on the white glue. Now I won't put it on first for sliding the planks, as I explained, not necessary, but I found it was good to put on afterwards, after I'd rolled everything and put it in place, because that basically then seeped through and made sure that all the deck pieces held in place. So a brush is handy, plus you can use it to roll the planks flat while they're on there. And you'll need a little rule to measure things. Now Airfix does have some planks marked and there is one right in the center. So that'd be handy if I just uh, we're doing even planks, then I could mark out from the center there and plank out, plank out, which is kind of what you normally do. But I'm doing an odd number of planks because I need nine to basically match up to the edges of this hatch. So what I'm going to do is I'll start at an edge because as long as I've done this correctly, I should be able to start at that edge and I can line up using Airfix's planks as a guide and my eye and allow for with the pencil, oh, so many things to worry about. Okay, that's my starting point. That line there is where I will start. Now the other thing to think of is, where are my bulkheads going to be? Well, there will be a bulkhead here, naturally, on the edge of a hatch. That will be a bulkhead, because obviously that hatch is attached to something. So you could guess a bulkhead there, be another bulkhead there. So let's have a look at what that is. Overall, this is 55 centimeters long. Two centimetres in, we've got a bulkhead. So if we then had another bulkhead, say here, well, that mast has got to go down through, so it couldn't be a bulkhead there. So we could go another two centimetres just past that mast. That would be a bulkhead. So my bulkhead lines, which I can mark, so that I know where my planks have got to end. All this prep work is helpful in getting this to look realistic. So I've got a bulkhead there, okay? Now remember, my little planks that are supplied, they're 65 millimeters and 325 millimeters. So sometimes it's good, on the other ones, it was good to try and get my bulkheads to match that. I don't think they're gonna quite work on this one, but that doesn't really matter. A mark here just after the mast. So I'm going to get a join there, then I can have a plank all the way through, and then I can have a join there. And that might work. I don't know if I'm going to get my three spaces, though. We'll see how we go. All right, either way, we'll start with a long plank here. So if it's longer than 325 millimeters, that is, it's 350. So I'll need a long plank to do that one there. So. I'll need one of these. Now, I found, even though, like with all artworks, um, wood decks, is you do need to just score your knife through to loosen out the pieces. And having this super sharp knife is a great way to do that. And then I can lift that piece out. All right, they're already pre-glued, so we are away. And onto my, okay, and once it's in place and you're happy, this is where the paintbrush comes handy. It's really, uh, really good to roll. Now cutting them shape, I found it was better to turn it over and because I've got this really sharp knife, I can lay it up against the edge of the plastic. One gentle click 
and is basically cut. So that's my first plank. Now, if it was out, and often I do this, I will run the rule along and go, well, hang on, does that look right? Is you've got a little bit of play. So is it straight? I haven't put a big bend in it. Nope, it's nice and straight. All right, so what I want to do now is I will keep going, but I'm going to use this little join here. So you save your pieces. Don't throw any pieces you cut off away because you will need those. So I'm going to now lay my second plank. But I want it to join there. So again, just a rest and that should lift off. There we go. And again, make sure that they're all pressed up nice and hard and they're nice and straight. Yep. So now I need a short piece. So I'm going to have to waste a little bit. How much do I need? About 15 mils. So I'll go a little more than 15 mils just to give myself something to work with. So cut that off there. When joining your planks, make sure that your grain isn't identical, so don't use the same piece and cut it off. You want each join to have a slight difference in the grain. Because one thing that's horrible about these sheets, especially when you, you do a whole sheet like on a battleship, is that from plank to plank to plank to join, the grain will run through that they've got, the grain stains and colours run through. Well, that doesn't happen on a real ship. Um, the planks will butt up at randomly, so the, the, the join and the grain won't match will rarely match this. It'll be a bit of a fluke that it does. So you're always looking for an edge that is different. So this one here and that one there, they're slightly different. So that's good. I like that. I'll get away with that. Again, I use my rule to make sure they're set. That's fine. And now I can use my long plank. to do the next run. There we go. That's sitting on there nicely. And push it up nice and hard. This is not dissimilar to what you do when you're really planking a wooden ship, uh, especially a model kit. Now again, push down, push down, don't drag across, because if you drag across, you're going to pull these. These are so little and fragile. And you'll also notice one of these here, you may not see that, this one here is slightly over, that one there. Somehow I've pushed that one up a little too hard. Well, you can make corrections if you've got the sharp knife. So I'll just simply cut in there, like that, and then I can flick that tiny little bit out. Gone. And now my plank ends match. I mean, there will be irregularities. This is wood. It's The beauty of it is, and the beauty of doing this is, any little damage and a sort of slight misalignments, that's not too bad because the decks kind of have that, as long as you don't go too crazy. All right, I'm going to keep going and finish this middle section, and then we'll get on to doing the major planking here. <laughs> Now 
I've got to my last plank and drift hasn't been too bad. In fact, it does match up, it matches up to the edge of there nicely. And there was one point there where the plank I was going to put on was basically matching exactly the same grain. So I had to go jump out and grab another plank and make sure that um, each time I was getting something a little bit different. I've also added a second cut line, you'll see there. And the reason for that is I want to get this breakup of three planks. Oh, rubbish there. One, two, three planks, and then there's another cut, say. One, two, three planks, and then there's another cut. Same there, one, two, three. All right, so that gave me my nice breakup. So there's not... Um, impossible there would be a bulkhead there as well. In fact, there's so many bulkheads on the ship, they're not that widely spaced apart because the ship, you know, has basically got to hold together. So there's quite a few bulkheads. So that worked really nicely to break that up and give me a bit of a, um, a broken pattern. Now we need to do the sights and they'll match off. Oh, actually, silly me, I need to do here. Now I've kept a lot of the little offcuts, right? And I don't throw anything away while I'm while I'm building because all these offcuts are going to come in very handy. So I need those for here. It's only a tiny little area. Now Bernard said to me, why couldn't I just cut a whole section out of this thing and then stick it on? Now I did try that with one of the larger um the, the larger plank pieces there, and it was probably about a centimetre I had, and I thought, well, that shouldn't be too hard. So I cut a centimetre of this, a strip, left the backing plate on it, put a little bit of my white glue down so I could slide around, put it on, peeled the backing plate away, and as I went to try and press and hold things in place, all the planks started separating and going over the top of each other. So the simple answer to that is no. It takes longer messing around trying to do that. Just put the individual planks on. They don't take that long to do. All right, I'll quickly plank that up and then we can start doing the sides. All those little pieces are now in there and I managed to make sure that they lined up perfectly. I was getting a little bit of creep and it was getting a little bit wide at this side, but they're easy enough to push up and straighten up to each other. So um, they're in. Now they're so tiny and they will come out if you bump them. So what I've got here is I've got a mixture of half white glue and half water. And just to make sure these guys set in place. I'll pop that on there. Okay, just remove the excess because it could make the um, the wash effects leach, not that's a real problem, but that will help those set. And I'll even do these gently. Now before I did that, I rolled them, I didn't show you that. You might have seen it in the speed up version. I rolled the, um, the planks nice and flat. And for that I used the paintbrush and I simply pushed it. I found a flat section at the end here. And I rolled and rolled and pushed everything flat. So I've used my rule to make sure that they are always at the correct angle and then I have used my paintbrush to roll them flat. Okay, now we're going to plank the, uh, the side. And again, I want to try this, this rule where it's only the fourth plank gets repeated, so you've always got a space of three. So if that's the case, I've got to join there. I really need two spaces here to accomplish that. So to get my two spaces here, I'd have to say, well, I'm going to need that join there. So what I might need to do is I'll need to split this. I'll need to do half and half. So, this is the sort of thing, I, I, I did it on the other one, so I was kind of got the hang of this, working out what you needed to do. And I found you'd have a, a cut on the left, a join on the left, a join on the right, a join in the middle, or you might just run pretty well the full length and have a couple of joins at the ends. This is a smaller piece. So, yeah, so my next join would be there, if I'm following this pattern. Again, I'm using a piece with different grain, so that sits nicely on there. That's at that uh, join part. The piece that I've cut off, if I flip it around, it doesn't have the grain the same way. So. 
that's what I want. I want the grain to always look random. Before I push these down too hard, get in with the rule and make sure that you could push them nice and hard. Now they're in place, I'm going to roll with my, a bit hard to do that one there, and again cutting them off from the back. I'm moving fairly quickly here when I was first doing this, I was very careful with each plank I put in, but I've kind of got confidence now just to fly in and do it. It took me over two hours to do the quarter deck when I first planked, and the quarter deck is probably about twice the size of this. When I went to the main deck, which is about three times, if not four times the size of this, I really had no fear and I worked out the method. I got the whole main deck planked in 90 minutes, so that's pretty good. So this one is really about a 30-40 minute job to plank. It's taking a bit longer doing the video because I have to talk to you. All right, I'll get on with this now. And what I'm going to do is every time I'll count three planks for the next join. So my next join here will have to be that one there. So that's that whole side planked, and it probably only took me about 10-15 minutes, if that. It really wasn't that hard. Now, your last few planks, again, overlap on the edge, because obviously I've got a curved edge there. Now, you'll be tempted to cut them now, don't, don't. Let them set in place. In fact, this is where your white wood glue mixture, I've got little plank pieces everywhere here. My little white wood glue mixture is going to really come into its own because it's going to make sure they set. It also seems to give it a nice little honey hue as well. Okay. So we'll leave that now because you really don't want to try cutting those. They'll, they'll, they'll wall the force of the knife will just peel the plank away. If you let that set now, then when you go to trim that excess off, it should come off fairly easy. That's the other side planked in now. So the entire foredeck has been planked and it's had some of that um, delayed white claw on it to settle down. While I was working, actually these planks folded over. I, mean, I was going to cut those off once they were dry. I forgot to cut them off because I was going to show you. But um, they actually folded over and set rather nicely to the edge there. All I did have to do was trim off a little bit of excess with the plastic so the deck wouldn't sit proud. But now this one's dry. We'll just do that. And as always when you're cutting, you go from widest to thinnest. Never start on a thin thing trying to cut out. It never works. So um, always with wood there. Very light score. Very gentle. You're literally only using the weight of the blade few light strokes and that is a perfect cut. Same here from the big bit to the small bit, never the other way. If you don't believe me, try cutting from the small bit and what happens is because it's the tiniest thinnest bit and you stick the blade in the whole thing pulls out of shape whereas the larger piece is going to have more glue and more attachment to the part so it'll hold in place so that's where you start and then you're gently feathering through. We're not quite done yet because make sure that we cut out the holes for the uh, deck fittings and the mast. If we don't do that now well it's going to be a bugger of trying to find them when we put the whole thing together later. So again using a very sharp knife cut through from the other side. Notice I'm pressing down onto my cutting mat to do this that way hopefully I'm not wrecking things. Here are those two tiny little slots. 
I think there's a um, probably a belay rack there. Or we can tie off things. Or it could be the ship's bell. I'm not sure. Should check the plans. But anyhow, those are in there, so that's good. But we need that mast hole as well, so we've got to find that. That's going to be a bit tricky. You can try and cut them as your plank. So as your plank sort of you're laying one plank near it, cut around that while you can still see half of it. But, um, there it is. Usually as long as you've got a little hole, you can then push the knife in and it will fall to the width. As long as you're not too vicious. So it'll only cut as wide as the hole and that's got to go forward from there so that should cut a little triangle out. So there we go. And you would want to undercut rather than overcut. So those holes are marked and I can tidy them up a bit later. So I'm not going to worry about them too much because the plastic will drop in. When we push the plastic in later that will push through these tiny veneer planks a little um, go down well. All right so that piece is now ready for dry fitting to the hull. Let's see how it looks. Slides in there nicely and then a bulkhead. Look at that. Just like a bought version. Yes. So I have nicely planked those three areas which has improved this get no end that's hidden so many of the bad mistakes and the terrible joints that the previous builder had put on this kit now we haven't really had time to talk about these wood effects that I've done and what I've done here on the bulkheads I've also added some extra planks it's a whole lot of little things that I've done I'll explain all that in the next video including how I repaired a lot of the pieces and the techniques that I used for getting the curves correct and I'll also show you how I replaced missing parts because here I've got a fur lease but there isn't one on that side so I'm going to cast that and then reproduce it on the other side of the boat that will replace the missing part so that will all be in part three which will be out in a few days really I've got a little shot it'll be out soon now, if you have enjoyed this video, please like it, please comment, subscribe, hit that bell notification. Let me know what you think about my videos. I'm always interested to get your feedback. And if you want to be involved more, but also get the videos early and advert free, then why not go over to Patreon and subscribe to my Patreon page for as little as a dollar a month. Yes, you'll get all those features. No ads, videos out early, you get to chat to me, you even get to suggest what might be in the next video your money you get to tell me what you want all right now keep watching for bass the cat she will make a special appearance at the end of this video so that's about it for now okay goodbye from australia and it's huru from harry hadini the lesser known bed bomb can often be found hiding under the sheets in bedrooms imperceivable to its natural enemy the sock monster it is there nevertheless and it will escape once it has been discovered. Shy but elusive, this creature can move at an incredible rate once discovered.